Hi guys, Mr. Ruffle Waffles here. I was woken up this morning at 6am by the sound of my fire alarm. Yay! Now, seeing as friends of mine last year, who were staying in student accommodation not too far away from where I am right now, had their entire building burned down because someone didn't know how to control their damn chip pan fryer, chip fryer, whatever it's called, deep fat fryer, this was a little disgruntling. But thankfully there wasn't a fire in this case, and there was instead only a silver lining to be had from the story, and that was that Nick Monty tweeted me and said, is this evidence for DLC5, and linked me to a page from Business Insider, or Markets Insider in this case, which is a subsidiary of Business Insider. Doing a bit of reading into it, this chap called Greg Hoffman, an intern, had written a piece on their website, and one of the things that was part of his article was a chart from UBS. UBS is a financial sort of, I guess, wealth management and investment firm. They work in all that sort of side of things, trading, investing, that sort of stuff. And they had created a chart, which this chap Hoffman was quoting from, which looks a little something like this. On the left, you have types of content. So we're specifically going to be focusing on the DLC side of this. In the center, you've then got 2016 and 17 releases of things. So we know that, for example, Infinite Warfare DLC is coming out in quarters one to three of 2017, etc. And then in 2018, they've got their expected things. So they're expecting to see a new Call of Duty, etc. The interesting thing, though, is that in the 2017 column, right at the bottom of the digital content area, we have a Call of Duty Black Ops 3 DLC pack, which for a lot of people, Nick Monty, who tweeted me being one of them, kind of seems like a bit of a prod towards DLC 5 being a reality. But before we make that assumption, I want to kind of put some brakes on things and just talk about whether that is a legitimate or illegitimate inference to be making from this sort of chart. I want to actually caveat with the fact that it just says DLC pack. So there is a chance here that despite all of the discussion that I'm about to have with you guys, this is just going to be referring to a camo pack or maybe something for the Call of Duty Endowment Fund, or maybe it's going to be voiceovers like they've just released with Infinite Warfare. Those sorts of things are possible, and we've known Treyarch to release camo packs for their games in the times when other devs have been making CODs, so that wouldn't be a massive departure from the norm by any means. As such, DLC pack might not be that interesting. But, Working on the assumption that DLC pack for Black Ops 3 here would be referring to a DLC 5, let's think about whether or not UBS even have grounds to make such a claim in the first place. If you have a load of money, let's say you maybe made a startup when you were in your 20s or something, it was really successful, you sold it to a bigger company, stayed there for a few years and then left with a nice healthy bonus and uh, some money in the bank, money in the piggy bank, you might want to think about investing in some other companies that are doing interesting things in the tech sector. It's generally a pretty interesting place to be because you can invest in a company that might be worth, I don't know, a thousand dollars one day and a couple million the next year or even more. And as such, you can get a massive return on your investments. And what UBS will do is try and point people who have loads of money in the right direction so that they can make good investments and get a high return. They're going to be looking for those 10x, 20x, 100x kind of unicorns that are going to be the really solid investments in the market that they can invest in, get a load of money back from, and then be a happy camper. To do that job, UBS will look at the market and look at individual companies like Activision, whose little sort of stock index tracker thing is ATVI, okay? So they'll look at what Activision is doing and they'll say, Hmm, do we think that Activision is going to grow a lot as a company and uh, make a huge impact in the sector, etc, etc, make a lot of profit for their investors, etc, in the next 12 months, in the next year, in the next couple of years? What's their future going to look like? And uh, to make those sorts of predictions, they'll say, okay, well, what games are coming out? And what sort of impact are those games likely to have? How active is the company in terms of... Uh, actually creating DLC and 
having a kind of healthy environment for sequels and prequels and all sorts of other things to be made for their IPs rather than just the usual run-of-the-mill content that they make year on year. What are they doing to get an edge above their competition? And what sort of things might they have really locked down and secret right now that are gonna release at some point, surprise everyone in the actual community, and thus make the company a load of money, and they'll grow from that. That's the sort of thing that UBS will be interested in, because if you've got a load of green lights and a load of positive signs that a company is very active and doing a load of really innovative things and looking like they're gonna make a load of money, then they're gonna be a healthy and wise investment for the people that are using UBS to decide where their money goes. Oh, it's also just dawned on me that I should probably disclose here, just because we're quite close to the sort of money side of things, the fact that obviously I've done promotional content for Activision in the past, and so you can't assume me to be non-biased in my discussion in this video. But that is solely, like, uh, essentially covering my ass, just in case someone requires that disclosure to be present for whatever reason. When you're in the kind of money area of things, like I just said, it's better to be safe than sorry, and so there, there's the disclosure. <laughs> but, yes, so... UBS will have their fingers in the pies and they'll be trying to figure out if Activision are doing these exciting things that are going to make them a load of money and therefore make their investors a load of money. It actually says at the bottom of the chart here, source company websites UBS. So UBS is saying that they've gone to company websites, got this information and then put it in the chart and that will hopefully inform their investors about what sort of things might be on the horizon for Call of Duty and specifically actually for Activision Blizzard as a whole. Does it look like the people that have made this chart have somehow received the knowledge that Jason last year said that more content was going to be coming to Black Ops 3 in 2017? Yes, it looks like that has happened. Is it possible that they have misinterpreted that statement as meaning specifically new DLC packs rather than just more content? Yes, I believe that it is possible that UBS have misinterpreted the difference between new content and DLC packs. Because Newton's Cookbook would not be considered a DLC pack, but there's a very good chance that someone at UBS who isn't necessarily a gamer per se, but is just researching this for the chart itself, they'll be much more focused on the finance world, I'm sure, there's a very good chance that they might call Newton's Cookbook a DLC pack. That might fit into the DLC pack framework in their mind because they're just going to be thinking, uh, well, I mean, you download it and it's downloadable content, so of course it's DLC. That's a DLC pack, right? That is not something that I think is unlikely to have happened. That said, the flip side is also possible. It is very possible that UBS, being a large investment and financial firm like they are, could for some reason have received some information from Activision because it's going to be within Activision's interests to make it seem like they're in a really healthy place because then their investors will be happier and they'll be more likely to be able to continue that happy relationship going forward, etc., Yes, there's a chance that Activision have therefore told them that they have some DLC pack coming later this year. They can't tell them exactly when it's going to be because they haven't locked it down just yet, but that is something that's on the cards. And as such, that would mean that the chart here is telling us that DLC 5, like I said with the caveat at the beginning, that we're assuming that this is a DLC 5 and not a voice pack, an outer pack, etc. DLC 5 is coming. That seems to be one of the interpretations you can take away from this. Personally, I don't think this is a smoking gun. I definitely don't think that this is a confirmation in any way that DLC 5 is going to be coming out. I think that it certainly doesn't detract from that idea, but it isn't the be-all, end-all sort of first bit of validation that we have suggesting that DLC 5 is 100% going to be coming out at some point in 2017. I don't work at UBS, and I don't think any of you do either, and as such, there's very little chance that we're going to be able to figure out exactly what the sourcing on this is. UBS are only probably going to comment on this for their own actual customers, and so unless any of you are customers with UBS and customers with the clout required to be able to get them to really dig deep and provide the source for this sort of information, there's a good chance that this story will end here. However, on the off chance that someone comes forward and says, I made this chart, and this is exactly where I got the info from, then hell yeah, I'm all for that. But for now, let's hold our horses. Does this confirm DLC 5? No. Does it... 
destroy the idea of a DLC 5? Definitely not. Is it positive? Yes. Another sign that DLC is coming out this year for Black Ops 3 is a good sign in my book. Despite the things that I've said about DLC 5 being potentially very negative for Call of Duty as a whole, etc., I'm willing to give them a pass on this one. So, I've been Mr. Off Waffles. Thanks for watching, guys. Thumbs up, please. That would be great. One of those little thumbs up. Just give it a click. Danke. And I'll see you guys very soon in another Zombies video. Bye-bye.